Hello everyone and welcome to Veteran Gaming. I am Aaron and today we're going to talk about Elden Ring. Now it's been well documented that Elden Ring is a very difficult game, but it's also been shown to be one of the most expansive and best open world games ever created. So I've come up with a video series I call the Power Hour that's going to show you how in just one hour you can make your character much stronger, getting gear, levels, and skills needed to make the game much more fun and enjoyable. This video will focus on the Prophet, a faith-based caster character. So, if you guys enjoy the content, make sure you click subscribe, click the like button, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, make sure you put them in the comments sections below. Thanks for tuning in and good luck. Well, we're waiting. Alright, so we're going to select new game. We're going to go in and pick our profit class. And once we start to create the character, we're going to give him a name. Design their look if you want to. And then for the keepsake, we're going to select the golden seed. Since getting an extra flask right away is going to be very helpful. Once we've got all that dialed in, we're going to go ahead and start the game. So the game begins. And... We're going to follow this path, and it's going to lead us into a boss that's going to ambush us. Uh, even expert gamers familiar with FromSoft titles really struggle with this boss. You're not really expected to kill the boss, so when he takes you out, don't be surprised. He's basically supposed to. So this is going to queue up another cutscene, and it's going to lead us into a cave where we begin. If you are brand new to this game, to FromSoft titles, I highly recommend you jump down to the right, this little cliff. And that's actually where the beginning tutorial starts, and that'll show you how the mechanics work, what buttons do what, how to target, and so on. If this isn't your first character, you've already done your homework on the game mechanics, then just go ahead, go move up, and move on out. So as you move up and out, you're going to stop and grab the first stranded graveyard waypoint on your way. We'll definitely be coming back to this later when we have the stone sword keys that are required to open this particular dungeon, but we're not going to go into there right now. So we're going to go ahead and go up, and you're going to be taken outside by a lift. And once you exit that particular area, you're going to have a great view of the world that they've created for you here at the beginning of the game. And we're just going to continue forward until we grab the waypoint. And then we can go ahead and speak to uh, the NPC, Var, or Vari, I'm not sure how you say it, quickly. And he uh, he's going to give you a little quest line that you're going to start later. So go ahead and make sure you exhaust all of his dialogue options until he starts repeating himself. Alright, so then we're going to go ahead and continue north, avoiding the giant knight on horseback, since it's going to be a long time before we have the build to knock him off that high horse of his. So we're going to go ahead and avoid the knight and make it to the church. I'm going to go ahead and grab the waypoint. We're going to grab the smithing stone off the anvil. And we can say hi to the merchant Calais quickly if you want to. Then we're going to go ahead and continue moving north. And we're going to head towards the gate front waypoint. At the gate front waypoint, we're going to go ahead and rest so we can queue up the cutscene where we get to speak to our lovely maiden. She's going to go ahead and grant us our Faithful Steed Torrent and give us the ability to level up by spending runes. After we speak with our Maiden, we're going to go ahead and teleport back to the Church of Ella Waypoint where we just spoke with Kale. When we get back to the Church of Ella, it should be nighttime. So we're going to observe that there is a witch that wants to speak to us. She's sitting on a little ledge of the church right there. And she's going to give us a gift because we are so awesome. We'll speak to her and collect our summoning bell, as well as our wolf spirit ashes. Then she's going to do a nice little disappearing act, so we'll do ours. And we're going to teleport right back to the gate front. Once we get back at the gate front, we're going to head east quickly, and we're going to grab the map for this section by this tall post. That's going to be for Limgrave. And then we're going to duck down this tunnel real quick here. When we get to the bottom, we're going to open the chest inside to get the whetstone knife. This knife is vital since it's going to allow us to change ashes of war on weapons, which we're definitely going to need in the future. After we've collected the uh, whetstone knife, we're going to exit the tunnel, mount up, and head east again to another waypoint just on the other side of the army camp. After we've collected that waypoint, we're going to continue southeast to pick up 
the somber smithing stone from the dead guy on the chair. Say thank you to the nice deceased man. And then we're going to head east and we're going to pick up the gold pickled foul foot. Because who doesn't love more runes? After collecting the foul foot, we're going to head south again to grab another waypoint in the southern portion of Limgrave quickly. Before we head on south some more. Now we're going to go ahead and cross the bridge. We're going to stop to collect the items on the bridge, of course, which includes a stone sword key. And then we're going to continue off the bridge, grabbing the waypoint on the south end. We're going to leave the Weeping Peninsula now and teleport all the way back to the gatefront waypoint and start our journey north. We're going to mount torrent and we're going to dodge, dip, duck, dive, and dodge our way through the gauntlet here until we reach the baby glowing tree with a golden seed to the north. We're going to collect the golden seed and continue north to reach the Storm Hill Shack waypoint. At the Storm Hill Shack, we're going to grab the waypoint and speak with Roderica. Roderica is going to tell us about how she is such a coward and is scared of everything. But we got to keep talking to her, and as we continue to talk with her, she's going to ask you to take care of her jellyfish summons, which you're going to happily accept. Once you finish Roderica's monologue about being scared, we're going to continue off again to the north. So we're following this path to the north, which is going to lead us around the east side of Stormhill Castle here. There's a quick scarab to kill along this path if you want for an Ash of War, but for the most part, you're just going to continue north a little bit to the east. You're going to dodge a bunch of wolves, grab some flowers and plants if you want to, and eventually you're going to come out to a ridge overlooking the Lyurne of the Lakes, and you're going to grab another waypoint. Quickly go ahead and run down to the church not far from there and grab a sacred tear. After we get the sacred tear, we're going to go ahead and teleport back to the Stormhill Shack. Go ahead and run down the path to the east now. It's going to take us to the War Master's Shack where we can activate another waypoint. At this waypoint, you can go ahead and rest and go back to the round table hold with your maiden if you want to. But we don't have that much to do right now, so I would recommend just coming right back to the War Master Shack waypoint. Then, we can speak with War Master Bernal real quick. Buy any Ash of Wars if you're interested. You're probably not going to need him on this particular character, but it's good to know where he is for the future. After that, we're going to head east. As we follow the road to the east, we're soon going to run into a small army camp. We're going to go ahead and dismount from our horse here. We're going to creep around to the north side of the camp. There is one enemy patrolling that we'll want to eliminate as quietly as possible. And then we're going to go ahead and continue to creep around this ruin until we see a chest and a soldier next to the chest. A quick backstab will take care of the soldier, or take him out however you need to. And that's going to buy us enough time to open the chest and collect the Beast Crest Shield, which is inside. This is a really nice shield that gives us 100 physical negation without being insanely heavy. So this shield's going to allow us to block all incoming damage from normal attacks. So we're going to go ahead and collect this shield, mount back up, and then leave the camp continuing east. We're going to head north, and we're going to go ahead and find a little catacombs that we're going to duck into. Now that we're in the death touched catacombs, we're going to go ahead and run deeper into it following the path I have here on the screen. Grab some Glove Orta as you pass it if you want, but the main thing we want out of here is the Uchi Gatana because we're going to need a bleed weapon here down the road. So grab some Glove Wart, grab the Uchi Gatana, and then get back out of there. After we leave the Death Touch Catacombs, we're going to go ahead and continue east, across the bridge grabbing the smithing stones if you want to and we're gonna go to the summon water village waypoint which is just west and we're gonna make sure we grab this because we're gonna come back to it several times later in the hour so make sure you grab that and then we're gonna keep going east we want to ride east all the way through the village ignore the little mini boss for now and we're gonna head over the fiery wall into Kalid and grab the waypoint Make sure you stay to the south of that church because there is an invasion and it is very difficult at this level. So stay away from the church, get over the fiery wall, get into Kaled. All right, now we are in Kaled, which is a zone way above our current level. 
It's really important to remember that everything in Caleb wants to kill you and is very good at it. So, we're going to mount up and we're going to head east to grab a couple more waypoints on our way, making sure we avoid enemies. We're going to make sure we stop and grab the map piece in Grail's Dragon Borrow near the dragons in the pond. And then we're going to go ahead and continue east, dodging giant dogs, small dragons, big dragons, pretty much everything, until you find the giant sleepy dragon, Grail, who is just laying there on the ground. So we're going to run around behind him to find the waypoint at Fort Faroth. And we're going to come back for a good old grail in a moment. But for right now, let's head north and east quickly to get another waypoint, some runes, and a memory stone. Faroth, we're running north. We're going to run down around the Erd Tree, avoiding the giant guardian. Then we're going to go ahead and continue north. We're going to find another graveyard. No enemies here. Some really nice golden runes. Make sure you grab those. After we pick up the runes, we're going to continue down next to the tower and the waypoint. This is the waypoint for doing the boulder dodging trick, little rune earning trick, which I can show you really quick. You're going to go ahead and just run down this path, dodge the boulder, watch the boulder go over the ledge. You should wait for a second and see 1900, 2000 runes, something like that pop up. If you go back to that waypoint, rest, then come back out, you can go back and do that same boulder trick again. You can do it as many times as you want, just resetting it every time. It's going to give you that 1900 or 2000 runes every single time. So it's a real quick and easy way to gain runes and levels in case you want to grind a little bit or in case you want to top off on runes to level quickly before entering a very difficult dungeon or boss encounter so you don't lose runes. If you just need to grab some real quick to buy a stone sword key or some arrows from a merchant, this is a, this is a pretty quick, efficient, easy way to grab a couple of runes every time. To get our memory stone, we're going to take the jumpy, windy thingy. We're going to jump it up onto the roof of the tower here, as you can see me do on the screen. At this point, I recommend dismounting from Torrent, that way you don't fall nearly as far. But you're going to slide down the roof onto the balcony seat here. Then it's as simple as running up to the top of the tower, opening the chest, and you get a memory stone for your efforts. Once you have the memory stone, you can go ahead and teleport to Fort Faroth behind Grail. If you haven't leveled enough to be able to use the Uchi Katana, now is a good time to do it because we're about to use it here on Grail. Also, now is a good time to go ahead and bind your golden foul foot to one of your pouch slots for quick and easy access. So, what we're going to do is we're going to run up to Grail's tail where no other little dragons are going to come and attack us, and we're just going to whack him until he dies. Again, it's important to have the Morning Star or really any other weapon that does bleed build up because it's going to take chunks of damage at like 13,000 apiece once that bleed build up procs. Without that bleed build up proc, you're just going to wail away on this dude for forever. So, you're going to wail away on him, get those bleed procs, do tons of damage. When you get him fairly low in health, go ahead and use your golden foul foot because you're going to get 80,000 or so runes for him normally. So with the golden foul foot, you're going to get close to 100,000 runes, which is really going to give you the chance to level up quite a bit for this early in the game and all the effort you've put in so far. So let's go spend our runes and level up. Should be, give or take, level 36 at this point. You're going to want to focus on Vigor, Mind, Faith, and a little bit of Arcane. So as you can see on the screen, I ended up with 14 in Vigor, 17 in Mind, 30 into Faith, and 13 into Arcane. Our next step is to teleport into Kaled, and we're going to want to head south, following the route you see on the screen, all the way down to the Cathedral of Dragon Communion. Remember, you're in Kaled, so you're really going to be dodging enemies still, because even though we're leveled up, we're not leveled up nearly enough to survive in Kaled. Waypoint, we're going to head over to the altar to purchase a couple of spells. We definitely want to grab Rotten Breath, and Dragon Ice is also a really nice addition. Our next step is to head back to the round table hold. Here we're going to go ahead and pick up our melee weapon, the Cypher Pada. 
this is a phase where you are going to die, so do not go into it with a ton of runes. If you need to go do the boulder trick, or buy some stuff, whatever you want to do, but try to minimize the amount of runes that you take into this area, because like I said, you will end up dying. So at the round table hold, we're going to jump over the balcony you see on the screen here. We're going to immediately start running to the left, back through a series of rooms, until we find the cypher powder just laying there. That's going to go ahead and cue the invasion, and uh, the Mad Tongue Albrecht is going to waste us, but doesn't matter. All we want is, was the Cypher Pata, which we keep even though he kills us. Second, to equip the Cypher Pata, it's going to be our new melee weapon because it's faith focused, which is what our build's all about. Our next step will be to head to the Stranded Graveyard, so go ahead and teleport there now. Once you're at the Stranded Graveyard, go ahead and unlock the dungeon using the Stone Sword keys we've collected. Unlock the dungeon, jump down, and begin running until you come to the ramp with the giant chariot o doom. This thing is incredibly annoying, but once you figure out the timing, it isn't that bad. As soon as it makes a turn at the top of the ramp, you're going to run down stay to the right side. When you get to the second alcove, run inside it real quick while the chariot passes, you heading back up. As soon as the chariot passes you, heading back up, run down again and enter the next alcove on the right. Go ahead and ignore the bad guy, immediately fall down to the next ramp. Continue running down the ramp until it narrows with emptiness on the outer edges. Go to the left side and fall down as easily and slowly as possible before the chariot runs you over. When you fall, there's going to be a ledge there and there's going to be two imp enemies that you should be able to take care of pretty easily. Once you've downed the imps, you can head to the bottom of the stairs, but be careful because there is a fire trap. As you run that way, be careful because there is an imp hiding in an alcove on the right. You'll need to go ahead and dispatch him quickly. Then, continue on towards the fire trap. You can take the path to the left real quickly if you want. You have to kill two imps there, just for the meager prize of some lightning grease, so I'll leave that one up to you. But the most important part is to continue down the stairs and across the path to grab the Erd Tree Talisman before the two falling mini-bosses destroy you. My advice is to sprint across the path, grab the talisman, and jump off the ledge so the mini-bosses don't get the pleasure of killing you. Starting back at the beginning, we're going to head right back in. We're going to follow the exact same path right up to the point we get to where the ledge narrows. And now we're going to continue on down, hit the next level, and then we're going to jump to the right and shoot back up. We have to do a little bit more chariot dodging here using the alcoves. Watch out for the baddies. Get all the way up to the top. And there's going to be yet another little mini boss we're going to have to take out. But then that is where we are going to get our dragon communion seal, which is so important to this build. After we've collected the Dragon Communion Seal, go ahead and run out into the nearest chariot. Take yourself all the way back to the beginning of the level because that's all we need here. Next step is going to be to head over to the Summon Water Village Waypoint and we're going to take out the Tibia Mariner boss. Tibia Mariner boss is very easy. You can fight him several different ways. Especially if you use your summons, very easy boss. You can basically ignore all the adds, summons, and just take him out. And he's going to go ahead and drop the Skeletal Soldier Ashes, which is an awesome, awesome summoning ash right at the beginning of the game. The best part about these guys is you summon them. If they get knocked down or killed by the boss, they'll lay on the ground and wait a short amount of time before they resurrect and come back, just like a lot of the skeletal enemies you fight in the catacombs. So unless the boss happens to hit him with an AoE of some kind on accident, the boss will kill them, ignore them, they'll come back up. So it's a constant distraction summons that's really going to buy you time and distract the boss. So this is a great early game summons that I highly recommend using. From here we're going to head south and a little to the east to the stepping stones on the side of the cliff. Go ahead and head down to the east and collect the golden runes at the graveyard.
We then want to continue south and east using the windy jump points to get down to the waypoint near the Church of America. Also going to go ahead and grab the flask and sacred tear inside the church before we collect the waypoint. Now that we're back at the Summon Water waypoint, we're going to go ahead and go back down the steps right near the other steps, but we're going to take them the other way. We're going to again find another graveyard filled with golden runes. Once you've grabbed the runes, go ahead and talk to Kenneth at the top of the ruined building over the road so you can start his mini quest later. Then continue south until you find the map in Mistwood. Then head towards the Erd tree to collect tear, pierce, tear pieces from the uh, tree there for the wondrous flask. Then go ahead and continue south to find a wandering merchant for smithing stones if you want to purchase those and then a little farther south for another waypoint. At this waypoint, let's go ahead and upgrade our flasks, use our golden seeds, mix our uh, wondrous physic flask real quick, before we head back to the round table to start the path to upgrading our summons. To upgrade our summons, we're gonna find Rodrika again, the same lady that was just terrified but gave you a lovely little jellyfish. Now she's gonna talk to you and it's all about not knowing her place in this world. So we're gonna help her out. We're gonna go and run and talk to the blacksmith. And as fate would have it, the blacksmith knows she should be a spirit tuner. Convenient. After speaking to the blacksmith, it's back to Roderica. After Roderica, it's back to the blacksmith. At this point, all interactions should be spent with them, so you can just go talk, or go to the round table itself to pass time. After you pass time, Roderica should be near the blacksmith now and ready to upgrade your skeleton ashes for you. That will about wrap up the hour for the Prophet character here. So in recap, for our melee weapon, we have a Cypher Pada, which does holy damage and scales with faith. Dragon Communion Seal, which is what we're going to use to cast our incantations, and we get the added benefit of the Boost Dragon Communion Incantation passive effect, which we are going to be using a lot. Beast Crest Heater Shield. The important thing here is our shield with the 100% physical damage negation. We have our Erd Trees Favor, our talisman that raises maximum HP, stamina, and equip load. And in our flasks we should have six and they should be upgraded to plus two, plus we have our flask of wondrous physics. So since we're feeling good and looking good, let's go ahead and head over to the first story boss just to kind of show you that this build does in fact work. So we're going to go ahead and travel to the Stormhill Shack waypoint and we're going to head into the castle. You can go ahead and kill some of these bad guys if you want, see if you can pick some stuff up, a little bit of runes, but it's not necessary. Most important though, we want to go ahead and grab the waypoint right in front of Margit's room. And now I'll go ahead and play the footage of my boss fight with Margit. Lean heavily on your dragon skills, especially for bosses as you're coming up, and then fill in with your Cypher Pata, and you are just going to cruise and really have the world open to you at this point. So, sit back and enjoy the build, guys. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click like, that way I have the opportunity to make more content for everyone. Oh, okay.